very much to Sister Farah, Farah for being uh, for being here. Okay, and then um for uh, Farah to be here lah. So with us, okay. So uh, Farah is actually my uh, PhD uh, student. Okay, and she's doing on textbook evaluation, ESP textbook evaluation. Okay, and then um <coughs> yes, and uh thank you very much, Farah, to spend your time. Uh, even more, this is actually Sunday. Okay, so thank you very much for you know for sharing your knowledge and and I believe that you know a lot more about um textbook evaluation as compared to I do. Okay, and then um yang uh apa? because I think because for the research I think you have read a lot a lot more than I do and then uh then because of that I think you are the best person to actually to talk about uh textbook evaluation. Okay, and um, uh, without further ado, I think uh, I would like to invite uh, Sister Farah to, to share the screen and uh, let's listen to her about uh, textbook evaluation. Okay, Farah, the screen is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Karim. Um... Oh, let me set ya. Okay. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Okay. Um. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Farah. Okay, and today I'm going to present on the what, why, and how of ESP matrix evaluations. Okay, I know the topic sounds a bit different than what been posted in the poster, yeah. But you don't be alarmed on that one because um today I'm actually covering more than what you posted in the poster. Okay, so um for today's um shall we call it lecture or sharing sessions? Okay, is going to be um, under the supervision of Dr. Karir. Okay, um, now let's move on with today's agenda. I'm going to start with uh, defining the term evaluations, followed by the terms materials, um, putting the two terms together, uh, what is materials evaluations, okay, and then I'm going to differentiate between the terminologies of uh, evaluations and analysis, because you see when you read paper, lots of um, researchers, they sometimes tend to use the two terms interchangeably, but actually there's a slight difference between the two terms. Okay, and then um, the needs to evaluate the materials, why do we evaluate it? And then when is the materials uh, evaluation carried out? Okay, um, this part, I'm going to talk about the pre-use, in-use and post-use of materials evaluations and um, followed by how is the evaluation carried out. Okay, this part will be the process of materials evaluation as been stated um, in the uh, poster, yeah? And then followed by a materials evaluation model conclusion. And the last part is going to be sharing sessions. We overview on my um, PhD thesis that I'm currently, um, currently writing right now, yeah? Okay, um, sorry. Okay, evaluations. Okay, the terminology of evaluations. Okay, um, according to American Evaluation Association 2014, um, evaluation is a systematic process to determine merit, worth, value, or significance. So when you evaluate some things, you want to know about this. Okay, I always say that you want to know about the worth of the things that you evaluate. So that's uh, the, the main point. Okay, um, according to Robinson 20. Three, page 19, 199, uh, evaluation is known as the collections, uh, the analysis, and the interpretations of information, which the data you're going to be used to form judgments about the value of particular program. Okay, for example, hotel management, tourism, technical students, or even the ESP course. So that's why you do the evaluations, okay. Okay, that's, uh, okay uh, the terms materials. Okay, according to Tomlinson, 1998, page, um, I suppose that is 10, yeah? Uh, okay, um, anything which is used to help to teach language learners uh, is called materials. And materials can be found in the form of a textbook, okay? Uh, okay, uh, the funny thing about the word textbook is that some of the paper, if you notice, they use the word course book. So textbook and course book would be um, the British uh, synonym, yeah? 
um, a workbook, a cassette, a CD room, a video, a photocopied handout, newspaper, a paragraph written on a whiteboard, okay, basically anything which presents or informs about the language being learned. Okay, um, there's another thing that falls under materials, and that would be RALIA. Okay, so RALIA is actually defined as the um, objects associated with real life, uh, with real life, okay, and that is being used by educators or teachers in the classroom in order to improve the students' um, understanding of real life situations, okay. Um, the example of Rayla would be something like, you know, um, the teacher brought uh, a real life squid, for example, uh, into a science classroom, okay. But in terms of materials evaluation, I'm not really sure whether Rayla can fall under that, can we uh, evaluate RALIA. Uh, I couldn't find any paper that evaluate RALIA, but uh, rather that lots of the papers been done on the effectiveness of uh, using RALIA in classroom. Okay, uh, this part, RALIA, whether it can be evaluated or not, if you ask for my uh, opinion, since there is no research been done on it, so I guess uh, you don't really evaluate RALIA, but you can discuss about that uh, more with Dr. Kari perhaps in your class, yeah? Okay, uh, next. Okay, what is materials evaluations? Okay, according to Tomlinson 2003, uh, materials evaluations uh, is, a pros is a procedure that involves measuring the potential value of a set of uh, learning materials. So you want to see uh, the, the value, the worth of the materials that you are using or you're going to use or you have used in your classroom. Okay, and it involves making judgments about the effects uh, of the materials on the people using them. So when we talk about the effects of the materials on the people using them, okay, who use that? Obviously, that's going to be the teachers and uh, the students, okay? And um, you've got to bear in mind when you are doing materials evaluation uh, that there is no absolute good or bad material. So you don't do the material evaluation because you want to prove, you want to judge the material as being not so good or a very bad materials. Okay, you don't do that because you see you are doing materials evaluation because you want to see the effect of it on a certain bunch of students or teachers that are using it. Okay, um, yeah, to be more specific, yeah, in detail, materials evaluation tries to measure some of all the following. Okay, I underline off the key terms, yeah, it's easy for you if you want to check what material evaluation actually try to measure. Okay, the first one would be the appeal of the materials to the learners. You want to measure that, whether it is very appealing or not that appealing, okay? The credibility of materials uh, to learners, teachers and administrators, whether it's credible or not, okay? The validity of the materials, okay? That is, you want to see is what they teach worth teaching, okay? What the content inside uh, the, the materials is worth teaching okay and then you want to see uh, you want to look at the reliability of the materials and that is would uh, the same materials give the same effect uh, to a bunch of uh, other groups uh, of learners or target learners okay and then um you also want to see, uh, you, you do the materials evaluation because you want to see the ability of the materials to interest uh, the learners and the teachers, okay? How is it being put, okay? How's the content, okay? And then you also want to see the ability of the materials, whether it can motivate the learners to use it. And the last one, the flexibility of the materials, okay? For example, the extent to which it is easy for teachers to adapt the materials to suit a particular context, okay? Uh, because so some materials is very uh, easy to use uh, for uh, what the teacher thinks are okay some of the materials sounds a bit uh, difficult and look difficult to use so you do materials evaluation you want to find out about this part uh, or this aspect okay for material evaluations in ESP is uh, um, is actually under um, the, the um, practitioners is one of the ESP practitioners duties so um, the reason I'm talking about this is because I'm actually comparing it with the uh, school situations, yeah? Because in school, uh, matrix evaluation is actually a shared responsibility between the teachers, the students, the school administrators, the curriculum developers, and, and so on and so forth uh, for the other stakeholders, okay? And um, the reason for this is because in school, um, the materials are prescribed by the Ministry of Education, okay, which is totally different from the university of the, or colleges, because uh, the materials in the university or colleges, uh, uh, for example, the ESP 
course are selected and picked by the uh, by the by the lecturer or by the course instructors. So that's why in EISP it falls under uh, the practitioner duties to um, evaluate it. Okay. Um, okay. Next. Um, Okay, the terminology between um, evaluation and analysis. Okay, if you write a lot of paper on materials evaluations or material analysis, um, uh, you will notice that the terms, the two terms have been used uh, interchangeably. Okay, and um, uh, it's actually very important for you to describe uh, the, the terminology clearly because according to Tom Ninson, um, uh, the, the, the two terms actually slightly uh, uh, slightly different, okay. Uh, sounds slightly different. So uh, let's take a look at the first uh, term, yeah. Okay. Um, and evaluations. The terms evaluation focuses on the users. So I underline on the uh, uh on the focus, yeah, uh, of the materials and make judgments about the effects. And no matter how structured criterion reference and rigorous and evaluation is, it will be inevitably subjective. Okay, so the evaluation carries the subjective uh, sounds to it, subjective meanings to it, okay, and focus on the users, okay. In contrast, for the term analysis, it focuses on the materials, not the users, but you focus on the materials and aims to provide an objective analysis of them. So you, you look at the objective parts of it, it's not subjective parts. So slightly different um, between the two terminologies. So when you want to do materials evaluation, you You've got to understand what evaluations is. You do not interchange use the, the term evaluation and analysis interchangeably. Okay. Okay, and next on okay, um, why do we uh, why do we evaluate materials? Uh, okay, according to Sheldon 1988, there are actually three basic reasons to um, evaluate materials here. Yeah? The first one, um, by evaluating materials, the teacher or program developer can make decisions on selecting the appropriate materials. Okay, this one would be before uh, you have a selections of book, you're not sure which one to, to choose, not sure which one to pick, so you do the um, materials evaluations, okay, to get a better idea on which materials would suit best with uh, a bunch of students that you are teaching at that time, okay? And then um, the second reason would be um, evaluations can make you uh, familiar, uh, uh, sorry, can familiar teachers with the potential weaknesses and strengths of uh, the material. So when you do the materials evaluation, you've got to see the weaknesses and the strengths of the materials. Okay, if let's say you come across with the weaknesses of the materials, so what can you do about it? Maybe you can plan ahead on the supplementary materials that you can use to top up uh, the weaknesses of that materials that you have picked or select. Okay, if let's say you find out there's a lot of strengths for that material, so what can you do? Uh, maybe perhaps uh, you can um, you can decide to use uh, the materials again in the future. Yeah. Okay. Um, the second, uh, the third reasons uh, to evaluate materials would be um, another way of action research developing our understanding of the function materials. Okay, you see when the teachers evaluate the materials, they understand the materials better. When they understand the materials better, they use it in the classroom, uh, in a program, they're teaching the student, uh, the student can understand it better because they, they themselves understand it better. Okay, and that would lead to, um, I shall say, um, successful learning, okay, and effective and meaningful um, lesson. Okay, um, Okay, uh, here's uh, some of the quotes I took from several papers. Yeah? Okay, the first one is by Missions and Timis 2015, page 36. Okay, according to them, the primary function of evaluation is to assess the suitability of materials for a given teaching and learning context. Okay, suitability in this part would be on the aptness, the appropriateness of the materials to be used um, in, in, in that particular classroom with that particular uh, bunch of students. Okay, and uh, according to Tom Ninson 20 or 3, it is important to keep in mind that no two evaluations can be the same because the needs, the objectives, 
backgrounds, for example, social cultural, um, local, and preferred styles of the uh, participant will differ from context to context. Okay, so um, you can do matrix evaluation uh, for this semester, okay, with this bunch of students. Uh, and then you can do uh, matrix evaluation against, uh, maybe you evaluate the same textbook, the course book or the same materials, but with uh, different contexts, different students, okay? You will not get the same um, information, the same data, okay? Because of this, what, uh, what I said just now, yeah, because of uh, the different needs, the different student, okay? Student background, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, uh, all in all, um, therefore, the main point is that it's not the metrics which are being evaluated, but the effects, okay, that's the keywords, yeah, the effects on the people who are using them, including the evaluators uh, too. Okay, so when you evaluate uh, the metrics again and again, I'm going to tell you, you're not, uh, you're not evaluating the metrics because you want to judge the metrics being not so great, or you want to prove that the metrics is so good, you want other people to use it, it's not because of that. It's just that because you, you want to see the effects of the materials with this bunch of students that are using it uh, right now or going to use it. Okay, And the effects varies from, from one bunch of students to another bunch of students. So you've got to bear that in mind. Okay, um, when is the evaluation carried out? Okay, in terms of the periods of um, the evaluation carried out, according to Kanye's book, uh, 1995 and Tomlinson 2003b, they propose the pre-use, in-use, and post-use evaluations. So pre-use would be before um, you start the program or the class. Uh, that would be the selection part. Uh, in-use, where you are, where you are still teaching okay you want to see the effect of it um and then post use after you are done with the program or the course you want to see uh how's the effects okay uh, on the on the students okay our uh, pre-use evaluations okay it is intended to predict the potential performance uh, of a material Okay, uh, so you want to see uh, whether the, the book might possess such uh, potential, such value to this bunch of students. So you use the previous evaluation. So if you think that the, the metrics is great, then you might pick it. Okay, you might use it in your classroom. And the in-use evaluations, it is conducted while using a course book. Okay, according to Kanye's work, 1995, page 14, uh, when a newly introduced course book, you're talking about the new uh, textbook, is being monitored, or when a well established but aging course book is being assessed, you're talking about old textbook might be, you know, the kind of textbook that you might be using again and again. Okay, you want to see whether it should be considered for replacement. So that's why you are doing the in use evaluations. Okay. Uh, because you want to see uh, whether the materials fits with the current classroom. Okay, it doesn't really matter whether the new textbook or the, the textbook that you've been using for many time, you need to um, do the in-use material evaluations. If it's not, uh, if the textbook uh, is not working for this bunch of students that you're teaching right now, so you have to think about replacements with the other textbook or the other materials. Okay, and the post use evaluations yeah, uh, is to provide um, retrospective assessment of material and is also used to decide whether to use the same materials on future occasions or not. Okay, obviously when you're done with the course, you want to see the effects of the materials to your student, you, you do the post um, use evaluations and then from there you can decide, okay, so we teach a bunch of students from this semester, it works very well. So you, you can predict it might work well with another set of students with a similar background, you can uh, make such prediction, okay, but you won't, see, you won't rely 100% on such a prediction, but that would be a good start uh, for you as the as the um, course instructors or the teachers before you start the next program. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, this one is what is actually I'm supposed to present uh, uh, as what been stated in the poster. Yeah? Okay. How is the evaluation carried out? Okay. This part talks about the process of material evaluations. Okay. Um, According um, to Hutchinson and Water, 1987, page 98, uh, evaluation process is divided into four major steps. Okay, as you can see, this one is taken from, from them, yeah? Uh, 
Uh, you start with uh, defining criteria. On what basis will you judge the materials? So what you want to see, okay, which criteria will be more important? So you define criteria. Are you going to be focused more on the content? Are you going to focus more on the tasks inside the material? Or are you going to focus more on the physical outlook um, uh, of the material? So you define your criteria. Okay, and for this part, if I'm not mistaken, um, has been done by Dr. Kare in your previous uh, lecture. Okay, talk about uh, aims of the materials, uh, independence or autonomy of the materials, the creativity of the materials, the content, the methodology, so on and so forth. So I'm not going to elaborate more on this one because it has been covered. So I hope it's still fresh in your mind. You know what uh, defined criteria is, yeah? Okay, um, after you're done with defining the criteria, you've got to do two analysis simultaneously, okay, uh, the subjective analysis and the objective analysis. Okay, subjective analysis, what realizations of the criteria do you want in your course? Okay, this part, in other words, you are doing the needs analysis of uh, the people that are using the materials, okay, so the needs analysis could be you are doing uh, the teacher's uh, needs uh, analysis or the student needs analysis or both. Okay, because uh, they are the one who's using uh, the materials. So you want to see what they actually want in a materials. Okay, and then as for the objective analysis, that will be on how the material being evaluated, realize the criteria. Okay, this part would be you analyze the materials. Okay, you will analyze the materials based on the defined criteria. Okay, you want to see uh, how is the material, what's inside the material based on the criteria that you have defined just now. Okay, and these two analyses, you've got to match it and because you want to see how far does the material match your needs. Okay, and then when you match the subjective analysis and the objective analysis together, that's only you can call your research is materials evaluation. If you only analyze the materials alone, uh, we call it uh, materials analysis, not material evaluation. Materials evaluation comes when you match your material analysis together with the needs uh, of the, the, the people who are using it, okay? If you do not match it with the needs of the people who are using it, you can't call your research as the materials evaluations, okay? Okay, now, um, okay, um, uh, I'm not sure whether you can see or not. Okay, I'm actually um, putting um, the subjective analysis and the objective analysis together just to show the difference between the two, yeah? Because I think when you're comparing between the two, you, you find it uh, a bit clearer to understand it, yeah? So uh, let's say you analyze it, the content uh, of the materials, okay? You want to analyze the content of the material, okay? If you are doing the subjective analysis, which is you are doing the needs analysis of the teachers and students, the kind of questions that you would be portrayed would be something like, um, what kind of language description do you require? You ask this kind of questions uh, to the teacher student, yeah? Should it be structural, notional, functional, discourse based, some kind, uh, some other kind, a combination of one or more of these? Okay, so let's say the same kind of question you want to ask when you are doing the objective analysis, which is, in other words, the matrix analysis. Okay, you want to ask the same questions, but this is how you put it, yeah? What types of linguistic descriptions? is or are used in the materials. You see, the same, um, the same kind of question, but when you're doing the analysis, it's wording differently, okay? Uh, because you see the subjective analysis focus on the users, the objective analysis, you focus on the materials, okay? Okay, uh, let's take a look at four equations, okay? Another example, yeah? What language points should be covered? This one, you're asking the teacher and the student, what do they want? To learn okay uh for uh okay in uh, that is what particular structures functions vocabularies areas so on and so forth that they want uh, to learn okay the same kind of question would it differently for objective analysis what language points do the metrics cover okay you see uh same questions but would it differently yeah for uh, subjective analysis and objective analysis so um uh, there are other other questions and they're actually more than these they are um uh, uh who, who is it just now um 
the uh, uh, sorry, uh, the Hutchinson and Waters they actually provide uh, a list of questions, something like this, comparing between subjective analysis and objective analysis. Uh, aside for content, they are for methodology part. So how would you uh, portray questions uh, on methodology when you are doing subjective analysis or when you are doing objective analysis, uh, so on and so forth. So if you are interested uh, to read more on this, you can um, you can find this paper, yeah, Hutchinson and Waters, 1987. Uh, page 98, okay, you can read more about it. It's actually very, very long, but I just want you to get the idea, okay, the difference between subjective analysis and objective analysis. Same question being asked, but the focus will be different. Okay, one focus more on the teacher and the student, the users of the materials, the other one focus on the materials itself. Okay. Um, okay, uh, here's come the methods. Yeah? According to Abdel Wahab, 2013, uh, he suggests three basic methods in order to do the materials evaluations. Okay, the first one this is the impressionistic me method. Okay, I mean, uh, by looking at the, the terms impressionistic, obviously, uh, this one talks about your impressions when you do um, the analysis. Yeah, uh, it involves analyzing a course book or textbook based on the general impressions. So, uh, you if, uh, you uh, you look at the materials and then what do you think? Okay, it's very subjective because it depends on what do you think about the materials. Okay, and this method this method will not be adequate in itself. Obviously, it's not enough because it's only based on the impressions. Okay, you don't really uh, scrutinize the content and the task uh, of the materials. Okay. The second method would be slightly deeper than the first uh, method, yeah, which is the checklist methods. Okay, it needs to be integrated with the impressionistic method. So when you do the checklist method, you you need to do do the impressionistic uh, method as well. Okay, you can't only do one; you, you've got to do both. Okay, so that the impressionistic method will not be inadequate. So when you do both, it become uh, complete compared to you you do only impressionistic method. Okay. In the checklist method, um, you have a if you have a list of the checklist, and then you sort of like uh, read the, uh, the materials based on the checklist. So in the checklist, you have certain criteria that you're going to look at. Okay, and then you have um, you have um, uh, you've got to rate it. Maybe you can use five point Likert scales. Okay, you rate it. Uh, accordingly, uh, and again, it's actually based on your impressions as well, uh, but but not totally impressions because you've got like a guideline, okay, uh, which you have to objectify uh, your, your 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 rating, okay. And then the last part would be the in-depth uh, method, okay. This one is the, the 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 deeper one, okay. It has to do with the profound scrutiny, so you scrutinize deeply, you go thoroughly of uh, representative features such as the design of one particular unit or exercise or how particular language elements have been treated. Okay. In other words, you are doing the internet evaluation. You're not just doing the external, you're doing the internet evaluation. And internet evaluation is, I mean, of course, very deep, a lot, a lot of things you have to look at, all these uh, tiny, tiny mini things you have uh, to analyze it. Okay. Okay, now, um, the other researcher, for example, like McDonald and Shaw, 2003, page 61, he, uh, sorry, they suggest that the evaluators should first conduct an external evaluation. You look at the, uh, the outlook of the materials, which offers a brief overview from the outside, and then you carry out a closer and more detailed internet evaluations. Okay, internet, in other words, uh, for Abdul Wahab, he call it in-depth evalu in evaluations. Yeah? So for McDonald and Shaw, he call it internet evaluation. Same thing, okay, different terminologies. So ASNA would be um would be conducted to have an overview of the organizational foundations of the material. Okay, so uh, ASNA would be like you look at um the textbook, how is it being organized, like how thick is it, uh who's uh, uh who the textbook uh, or the mattress is intended with what, uh, with which group of uh, students? Okay, is it uh, intermediate or is it advanced students? Okay, and sometimes they're gonna ask questions like, uh, what about the color? Uh, the color being used in the textbook is it monotone, dual tone? Okay, is it very colorful, very attractive, very appealing? Okay, stuff like that. You you analyze uh the outlook. Okay, of the of the materials. Okay, um. 
A detailed internal evaluation is done as to see how far the materials in question match up to the author claims as well as the aims of object of a given teaching program, okay? Uh, according to McDonough and Shaw, 1993, page 64. Okay, um, so this one, you, you really wanna, you really wanna see what inside the textbook, whether it matches with the claims and aims made by the author. So that's why you are doing it. Because uh, you see sometimes the authors in the preface, it says that, okay, this textbook uh, aims would be this, 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 and this, okay? Uh, but when you analyze the textbook, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't match okay, with whatever the author claims, okay? And what's inside uh, the materials. So it's very important for you when you select a material, you've got to do the internal evaluation because we want to see that. Okay, if it, if let's say what the claims uh, does not, the claims made by the author does not match with the aims, okay, what you can do is maybe you should decide uh, to use other materials, okay. Okay, and next, um, okay, here are some of the most renowned, most cited, very popular, most adapted materials evaluation framework. So, um, if you are interested to do research in this area, you can uh, Google out uh, this uh, framework. You can pick one and Google out how, um, uh, Google out uh, in terms of uh, understanding in terms of the, the criteria and how to, um, how to evaluate the materials, okay? Um, so, it's very great. Uh, is very is going to be very great if you can just adapt uh, or adopt some of the some of this framework rather than you create on your own. I mean that you can create on your own. I've read uh, a paper written by um, Lee twenty or three, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, he came up with his own metric evaluation framework. Um, is is quite tedious and complicated process, but if you want to do it, you can. Uh, but the easiest one would be for you to adapt. On um, one of these uh, most cited, most adapted framework, yeah. So we have uh, Tomlinson Materials Evaluation Framework, very popular. He has a lot, a uh, few of the framework, okay. Look, this uh, Materials Evaluation Framework, I believe this one has been covered by Dr. Kare, yeah, in the last uh, your lecture session, okay. We have this Materials Evaluation Framework. Mukundan and okay, this one is a bit complicated to pronounce. Um, Nimaki Salam's textbook evaluation checklist. Okay, this one uh, on the checklist. Okay, so if let's say you do not want to use framework because it's uh it's very complicated, you can use checklist. Mukundan and Nimaki Salam's checklist is actually um user friendly. Uh, lots of teachers. Uh, use that okay because it it it, it, it provides a very great uh, gu uh guide for for teachers to use it okay uh, and then next we have uh the McDonald and Shaw and Masuhara's materials evaluation framework and I believe this one also has been covered by Dr. Gareya McCall's materials evaluation framework uh Dumi and Etas checklist okay. Uh, if you, if let's like, say you do not want uh, you feel that Mukundan and Nimaki Salam uh, textbook eventually uh, evalu uh, sorry evaluation checklist is not as appealing. Okay, you can uh, take a look at Demi and Etta's checklist. Okay, so if you notice, know, I did not state on the the year. Okay, it's because uh, some of the researchers they produce quite a number of frameworks, so you can Google them. Uh, Google Google them uh, out, and then you just pick which framework uh, that you are interested to use. Okay, because one framework uh, it differs a bit here and there. Okay, for example, like Tom Lin said, he is alone has come up with few frameworks. Okay, um, as for my thesis, I'm actually adopt uh, adopting uh, Tom Lin's 2011 uh, matrix evaluation framework. I'm gonna um, share with you uh, on it later. Yeah. Okay, uh, out of all these frameworks, okay, I'm going to choose, I'm going to choose one to show to you. Okay, I'm choosing um, Kundan and Nima Kisalem's 2011 ELT textbook evaluation checklist, also known as the ELT TEC, okay, as for the acronym, okay. This checklist, um, I hope you can see it now. 
This chart is uh, super user-friendly. It has been validated uh, and tested for its reliability. So you don't really have the questions on the reliability part. And it was uh, developed by a review of literature. And Mukundan uh, and Yimeka Salam did, uh, uh, did um, write a paper on that, how they, how they review, uh, how they come up with this uh, checklist. Yeah? And then it was refined through qualitative and quantitative methods. So it's a very complicated method for you to come up with your own checklist uh, or your own framework. So uh, because I mean, I read the Mukundan and Nimaki Salams. And uh, I think if you do not have a lot of time, so you do not have a lot of sources to do it, uh, you can simply um, adapt and adopt from, from them. Yeah. Okay, uh, so this is how the checklist look like. Okay, uh, it contains two main categories. As you can see, the first one will be on the general attributes. Okay, and then the second one will be on the um, on the learning teaching content. Okay, and under the general attributes, uh, you can, as you can see, they are they are five major components. Yeah, which are syllabus and curriculum, methodology. Uh, suitability to learners, physical and utilitarian attributes, and the last one, efficient outlay or supplementary materials. Okay, and under the uh, teaching and learning content, there are other sub, uh, how should I say, sub components, yeah, which is on the general content, the listening, speaking, reading, writing, vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, and exercise. Uh, this is actually uh, much more suitable for ELT textbook evaluation compared to ESP. Okay, but some of the ESP textbook, let's say if the textbook focus more on the proficiency, you might adopt this uh, checklist. Okay, you, you can adopt this checklist as long as if the textbook uh, uh, is it if the textbook is on proficiency, you are, you are looking at the proficiency, uh, then you can use this uh, checklist uh, to evaluate it, okay? Okay, the rating system is actually based on a five-point scale, yeah, with zero, uh, never true, one, rarely true, uh, sometimes true, for two, three, often true, four, always true. And in case of some of the uh, item is not applicable, it's not in the textbook, uh, the evaluator may use the option and a, you see the first column there, yeah? uh, not applicable. And in order to interpret the, dat uh, the data easily, uh, there is uh, a table, if you look at, uh, let me see, okay, you look at this one, yeah? Table scores interpretation guide. Okay, Mukundan and Nimeki Salem even provide this: how you interpret the data after you are done with the uh, with the analysis of the the textbook. Okay, so um, so it is going to be easier for you to understand uh, your findings. Okay, uh, okay, with level one zero uh, stands for a neg negligible usefulness, ones uh, for low usefulness two for moderate usefulness, three for high usefulness, and four for very high usefulness. Okay. So that's why this uh, checklist often being used by many ELT teachers, okay? because you see teachers sometimes they don't have the source to do their own uh, checklist. So the adapt from Mukundan is very user friendly, easy to interpret the findings. Okay. And also cost is effective. If you look at, I mean, just have a browse, you look at it, it's very um, uh, systematic. Okay. Um, all elements uh, are deemed to be important in the textbook are there uh, for, for, for the teachers to use it and to evaluate it. Okay. Uh, okay. These will be examples of uh, Mukundan and Nima Kisalam uh, checklist. Okay. Now, um, ah, it comes to towards uh, the ends of our today lecture. Yeah? So, in conclusion, uh, the perfect material does not exist, but the best material for you and your students certainly does. Okay, so you can't say that uh, you want to do materials evaluation because you want to find uh, the perfect one. There's no such a thing as perfect materials, but you can find the best one that can be used in the classroom. Okay, and such materials should satisfy these three conditions. Yeah, 
The first one is you suit uh, the, the needs, interests and, interest and abilities of your students. If let's say the materials does not suit with the needs, interests and abilities of the student, let's say is very complicated or uh, it, it has nothing to do with what your student wants to learn, it's not going to be um, a successful learning at the end of the day. Okay, so you've got to bear this in your mind as well, okay, when you select the material. And it also should suit uh, you, okay, as the teacher, the course instructor, the best material in the world won't work in your classroom if you have good reasons for disliking it. Okay, so if you do, when you do the materials evaluation, um, you need to understand the material. When you understand, sorry, when you do the materials evaluation, you understand the material better. So when you understand the material better, of course, you start to like the material because you understand it. But when you go to your classroom without understanding the materials that you're bringing into the classroom, how are you going to like it? So how are you going to teach it? If the teachers, uh, him or herself, can't understand uh, the materials, okay, she can't really uh, give you know, the best impact in the classroom. Okay, uh, Let's not talk about the success at the end of the day, uh, the success of the lesson in the classroom. Okay, and lastly, um, the material must meet the needs of official public teaching syllabus or examination. Of course, when you are teaching, you have certain guidelines, okay, certain curriculums and syllabus that you need to follow. And so when you do the matrix evaluation, you want to find materials that is closely following the syllabus or the curriculums and also the examinations, because that's what um, we're going to test the students, okay, at the end of the day. So, um, okay, um, so far, is there any question uh, from uh, all of you? Any questions? Uh, are you okay so far? Uh, yes, I just, I just want to clarify. Mm -hmm. um, wait, um, is it okay if you uh, go back to the previous slide? Mm -hmm, which is? Uh, the framework. Framework? Yep. The uh, Nikki Nikki something. <laughs> uh, this one. Uh, this one, yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's say uh, if, okay, as an ESP practitioner and if let's say I'm going to teach students. Mm. Uh, so this is, uh, so I can use this to evaluate to see if the materials is suitable. Yep. Is it like that? Mm. You attach this uh, checklist. Okay, and then you evaluate the materials, let's say a course book or textbook you use uh, in your classroom, your ESP classroom. So you've got the materials with you, you read uh, the, the first checklist, yeah? for example, on the general attributes of the materials. Okay, the material in relation in relations to syllabus and curriculum. Okay, the first one, it matches the specifications of the syllabus. So you've got the materials with you, you see, it. does it match with the syllabus? Okay, so you rate it. Okay, uh, is it zero, never true, or rarely true, sometimes true, you rate it, okay? So once you're done with the rating, then you can see whether the materials uh, have, uh, materials is closely suitable with your uh, classroom or not, okay? You can just simply adapt this, rather than you coming up with your own um, checklist. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, that's nice, because, um, because just now, even before, uh, there were uh, quite a few frameworks that you showed us, Right, this one, yeah, uh, yeah, this one. So I just want to ask, uh, uh, are you, are you, are you teaching? I'm actually a secondary school teacher. Oh, mm -hmm. secondary. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so do you use um some of the framework, all of this framework to to teach to teach your students? Um, few years ago, I did evaluate the textbook in the classroom. Uh, this would not be the framework I'm using because this one would uh, would be on you analyze on the content. So a few years ago, I analyzed on the cultural aspect of the textbook. Uh, I analyzed the contents, but I focus more on the cultural aspect because I'm an English teacher. The thing is about the textbook, uh, the current textbook is, uh, it was uh, it is written by a British linguist. So the content inside the textbook is very British. Okay, and there's the word... Uh, uh, 
Uh, okay, for example, like the image, the pictures in the textbook, yeah. Uh, lots of you can see lots of orang putih, the Westerners uh, pictures being used rather than uh, the Muslim like us. Okay, you don't see the Indian or the Chinese pictures in the textbook, and also some of uh, the words uh, quite uh, unfamiliar for the student. For example, uh, they describe about Christmas. I mean, like students know Christmas. Uh, on top of Christmas, they describe about uh, the um, uh, the Thanksgiving. They just talk about uh, winter, the activities that you can do or spend with your family during winters. And also they talk about English um, around the world, English in, Scot uh, in Scotland, English in Ireland, in Wales, how the people of that speak. And then lots of things, even to mention on the countries itself, the student will be a bit blurred. They were like, oh, teacher, where is Wales? I never, have, I never heard of the word before. Okay. And then um, we talk about, uh, they, they talk about certain uh, culture in Scotland, you know, uh, people kissing the stone if let's say they are they having problem uh, to speak okay they can go uh, there is a place uh, the, the the stone the, the ring stone you can kiss the ring stone uh, because the people over there believe when you kiss the ring stone uh, you're going to overcome uh, the problem is speaking for example so uh, because of that students find it a bit dif uh, difficult to understand Okay, when they can't understand the, the content of the textbook because uh, the British language select this content because she's, of course, she's familiar with those contents, yeah? The students are not familiar. So it sort of like shut some of their uh, mood and it demotivate them to learn. Because you see the examples, the content based on the on the on the British uh, on you know those Westerners uh, content. So I did uh, uh, textbook evaluation uh, previously, but not on this uh, types of evaluation. Mine will be on the cultural content of the textbook. Okay, this one, if you can see, it's more on the content. Um, like Tomlinson focuses more on the um what's inside the material in terms of the content, the methodology, you know, it doesn't touch on the cultural part. Okay. So it's a bit different, same thing, but focus a bit different. Mm. So, so that means uh, for the textbook evaluation, so you're not using any of this framework. So it's basically just based on your knowledge, right? So you just adapt uh, what needs, uh, that thing that needs to be changed. Oh, I actually use a framework. Um, Oh gosh, when you ask me, I, I forgot. It start with the letter A. What's the researcher name? Yeah, because like five years, uh, four years ago, five years ago, uh, research on textbook, I actually adapt a framework uh, from somebody on cultural content. Okay, uh, so yeah, I actually adapt framework. I did not come up with my own framework based on my own knowledge. Okay, my knowledge on uh, textbook evaluation is not so vast, so great that I am so ready to come up with my own framework. So I actually adapt. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. I know uh, Any other questions? Uh, it's my com. Salam. Okay, I have a question. Yeah. Okay, since that uh, nowadays there are many kind of uh, latest technology in on uh, in teaching students by using uh, DVD, uh, audio, or uh, a link from the internet. Do you think that it is uh, possible for our new um, teachers to use this kind of technology or we just use this traditional one just referring to the traditional books ah okay uh, in terms of materials to be used in the classroom yeah it's actually uh, uh, for um, ESP let me focus on ESP yeah, because our today yeah, lecture yeah. for Shai yeah. Saku will be on ESP rather than school because in school you are bound to whatever that the Ministry of Education giving to you okay so for ESP it actually depends on the um, on the course instructors if you want to use the cd room you want to use a cassette you want to use an excerpt from a certain newspaper okay you can do so Okay, because uh, for e ESP uh, practitioners, you have the freedom, okay, the leisure to use whatever materials you want to use in your classroom, as long as you think it will best. It's not just you think, you've got to prove it through materials evaluations, okay? You just want to see whether uh, those materials will work best with your students, okay? I'm not going to say you need to use a textbook, you need to use a course book. It's not necessarily. Whatever materials that is out there, you can you can use it in your classroom and you do the materials evaluation, you see that it works best with this bunch of students, use it, okay? You're not supposed to put yourself that you are bound to textbook or course book, okay? Mm. 
Hmm. And then uh, you talk about uh, referring to the syllabus, great materials, you have to refer to the syllabus. So uh -huh. for the ESP, usually they don't have a specific syllabus just like in school. So how to begin to create the materials without using the syllabus? Uh, you actually have a guideline, right? When you uh, when you uh, teaching, you have a guideline, right? You have uh, you need to have the course outline, if I'm not mistaken, right? In university, so I mean, referring to ESP, let's say you go to yeah, in company. ESP program, you need to have a, a guideline, if I'm not mistaken, a course design where it stated the objective of this course, ESP course. What is it? Okay, so um, uh, yeah, in terms of the curriculum, I'm not really sure in terms of the syllabus for ESP course, but I know that every of the courses offered in university and colleges, you need to have the course uh, outlines, okay? In that course outline, there is part where you stated the objective of the course. By the end of this course, students should uh, master or should get this, 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 and this. Based on that, you find the oh, um, I mean, if you, let's say, we go to the company, Okay, because huh? this is ESP, go to the company, not, not universities, the company. Uh -huh. And the company require us to create the materials for, let's say, bankers. This is for adults. Uh -huh. uh, so, of course, there are no syllabus, right? Uh -huh. so the company, not to the university. Lah. It's a university, yes, I know there's a syllabus. Uh -huh. For the company that they require us to, to create material to teach them. So, uh -huh. without the syllabus, is there any uh, way for us to create the, the material without referring to the syllabus. How to create the material without the syllabus? Needs analysis. Yes, you administer the needs analysis. You figure out what the students want, those bunch of bank people want. Okay, you do that. From the needs analysis, you find the materials that you think suits the students. And you can also do the materials evaluation because you want to match. Okay, what's inside the materials with the needs that you um that, that you um you try to find from that that bank students, okay? And then yeah, that is how you do the evaluation if you do not have a curriculum or syllabus. Good questions, yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, I respond to, to that, Ipara. Uh -huh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um I think I think yeah, because uh Kyra, the, the thing is because you take this course first before we, we do the uh course design. Okay, supposedly you do the course design first, actually. Okay, the thing about uh when we develop our course, you know, like you talk about and we go to company and whatnot, normally, yes, of course, we need to have the need analysis first. Okay, the need analysis will come in and then so that the the stakeholders, so called the stakeholder, or maybe the company's bosses, or maybe the, the staff themselves, you know, the the, uh, the workers at the company, they will tell us what are the things that they want to learn. Okay, from there we will create our our syllabus uh, from the need analysis. Okay, so and then from the need analysis that we uh, we from there we develop our syllabus, and then from the syllabus we will develop our material. I'm sorry that you come in and uh, you just jump in uh, material uh, evaluation, um, material uh, development. Supposedly, you go first for, for the, um, for the uh, course design. Okay, inshallah, I think we will have course design next semester. Uh, and then from there, we will, uh, we will look into uh, how we develop the syllabus uh, based on the need analysis. That is how actually we develop our, then the, the process, like the process of how actually we develop our our ESP course from the analysis and then we develop the, uh, the syllabus and then we develop our materials and then we, we evaluate our materials and then we have our program evaluation. Program evaluation will be another thing um, that comes uh, with it. And of course, in between, we have our teaching method and whatnot uh, in the middle. Okay, so yes, to answer your questions, okay, uh, how we develop syllabus uh, for companies, we actually, we have to do the lead analysis first and then from there we develop our materials or we adapt and uh, we select our materials all right thank you farah please uh, proceed thank you farah okay yeah no worries. okay no more questions eh, on, on on the lecture part so we're going to move on with the uh, sharing sessions okay so this one is going to be on um, my uh, my phd thesis so I'm actually doing a uh, materials uh, textbook evaluations. Yeah, I'm, in, uh, I'm doing textbook evaluations, and then I'm going to match uh, the textbook evaluation with the students' needs. Um, 
Right now, I can't actually say uh, the, the, the final title of my PhD yet because um, I'm facing a hurdle, which is uh, which textbook that is available for me to evaluate. Okay, some of the uh, textbook or the, the materials uh, are there, but then I, didn't, I couldn't get the permissions. Okay, some of the materials are there, but I couldn't find it yet. Okay, so okay, it's okay. It's a part of uh, the PhD journey life. Okay, hopefully I'm going to um, overcome the hurdles soon. Okay, so basically for my, uh, the, I'm going to talk about the textbook analysis part first, yeah? Okay, I'm going to adopt uh, the Tomlinson 2011 in-depth uh, evaluations of language teaching materials models. So uh, in Tomlinson 2011 uh, models, Oh, oh, before that, uh, before I forgot, I'm going to share with you uh, the objective of my study. Yeah? So um, there are several objectives. Uh, first, I'm going to offer a description of explicit nature of the EAW textbook. Uh, and then I'm going to provide analysis of the task. I'm going to look at the content of the textbook. Okay, and I'm going to draw general conclusions about the textbook on the whole, and I'm going to identify the student academic needs. Okay, and then I'm going to match uh, student academic needs to the selected textbook. Okay, in doing so, in, in order to answer my, uh, my, my, uh, in order to answer my research questions, uh, I'm going to adapt uh, Tomlinson 2011 in-depth evaluations of language teaching methods model, yeah? Okay, so these models uh, evaluate in depth a set of materials uh, in three levels. Okay, as you can see, the first one, uh, the first one would be the objective descriptions of the material. Okay, the second one would be the subjective analysis of the material, and the last one would be the subjective uh, inference uh, of the materials. Okay. So let's take a look at level one. Okay, level one as it means the explicit nature uh, of the textbook. Okay, in other words, it answers the questions of what is there. Okay, what is there? And the investigation begins with statement funds uh, in the textbook. Okay, the statement might cover the publication date, okay, the intended audience. Okay, basically you look at um, the overview, okay, the, 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 the overview of the textbook, what's there? Okay, the aims mentioned uh, in the textbook, the thickness of the textbook, the color use of the textbook. Okay, that will be the level one of uh, objective descriptions. Okay, and then for level two is actually slightly deeper uh, level of evaluation if you come back to level one. Okay, and uh, this level, is uh, done to answer what is required of users' questions. Yeah. So in this part, the investigation begins with statement found uh, within the textbook. Okay, the statement might cover. Uh, sorry, uh, it concerns on the uh, on the um, on the task inside the textbook. Okay, uh, it, for this part, I need to uh, make a deduction on precisely what teachers and learners using uh, the textbook uh, needs to do. Okay, or we have to do, assuming that they are using the textbook according uh, to the manner indicated. Yeah, so basically this part, I look at every task is there and then I analyze it accordingly. Uh, okay, and then the level three would be that uh, I draw together every evaluation of the textbook that has been made in level one and level two. So from there, I make uh, the inference, okay? Inference such as uh, the aims, principles uh, of selection and sequence of the materials or the textbook. And then I deduce the teachers and learners roles. So based on my first and second level of analysis, I deduce the roles of teachers and uh, learners and then also deduce the role of materials as a whole. Okay, so it calls subject is inference because I'm making inferences based on the previous analysis. Okay, so this will be the um the uh the textbook analysis part. As for the students, I'm going to, I'm going to administer uh, uh, a questionnaire for them to answer on on their needs. Okay, of uh, EAW English for Academic Writing. That will be my focus. Yeah? I'm very uh, very narrow. I'm narrowed down. Okay, so they're gonna answer the, the, the questionnaire, which is gonna be on, on the needs of what do they want to learn, what they are lacking of in terms of academic writing. Okay, and, and analyzing the data, I'm gonna use factor analysis, yeah? So I'm gonna use factor analysis to extract the needs of the students, okay? Uh, okay, um, oh yeah, uh, for, um, if you look at this one, for level one, what is there? Okay. 
This, uh, the one on my left, okay, that would be uh, the textbook schedule. So I'm going to use this schedule provided by the um, by um, by the Tomlinson, yeah, uh, provided by um, by the researcher uh, himself. Okay, so I'm going to jot down what's the title, who's the publisher, the author, the year, and then the type of the textbook. Okay, what type is it? Is it uh, like the one I'm doing now is academic writing? Okay, the in intended audience, okay, age range, is it for uh, younger students? Okay, middle age students, okay, uh, intermediate student, uh, for example, okay, or is it for um, uh, average, uh, sorry, not average, uh, the beginner students, okay, institution, is it for uh, colleges or universities, okay, and location, is it uh, to be used uh, locally, okay, or is it the textbook you, you taken from out there and then you brought it uh, to, to your um, uh, to your university or your classroom, okay. And at stand, you talk about the components inside the the textbook, total estimated time. Okay, how long should you uh, should you spend to finish covering the whole uh, course book? Should you spend the whole semester? Should you spend like the first quarter of the semester uh, to to finish the whole textbook? Okay, and how to be use it. Should it be used as the main textbook in the classroom or should it be used as the supplementary materials in the classroom? Okay. And then I'm also going to look at the design of layout, the use of colors, how many colors, number of pages. Okay. And then number five will be on the distribution of the materials, how many units are there for teachers and also for learners. Okay, uh, what about the audio, the audio script? What about the answer keys? Uh, are they all there uh, provided in the textbook? Okay, guidance on use of the materials. Uh, is it there or is not there? If it's not there, then how um, is going to be, uh, how the students going to learn it? Is it uh, based on teacher's instructions? Okay, teacher guidance instead. Okay, and methodology guidance. Uh, is it there in the textbook? Extra practice and also tests. Okay, I'm going to look at all of this uh, material, okay, objectively, okay, and then uh, access, okay, what about the syllabus uh, overview, okay, the bibliography, the indexes, okay, are they all there, uh, easier for students for, let's say, they want to check uh, what they have learned, okay, can, can they check it uh, in the textbook, okay, or do they want to read more on certain part of the textbook, they can refer to the indexes, okay, find, uh, find uh, which part of it that they want to read more online, perhaps, Okay, and the route through the material, is it specific or is it user determined? Okay, if there's another criteria, I can add more uh, to this uh, in this column. Okay, and the, and the subdivision, okay, how is it being, um, being put? Okay, maybe uh, is it being divided according to units? Okay, so if it's according to units or according to themes, okay, how is it organized? Okay, uh, for the second level of evaluation, what is required of users? Okay, this part, I'm analyzing the task inside the, the textbook. And for this part, I need to use this task analysis sheet provided by Tomlinson 2011. Okay, so, so on this sheet, I should analyze the materials according to this criteria. Okay, for example, on, on the first criteria, okay, which is on the what is the learner expected to do okay the first one the turn take okay should the learner initiate or uh should uh, should the learner um uh, wait okay uh for uh, or should the learner wait for the teacher's instructions okay uh what about the response is it scripted or not scripted okay uh is it required or not required for the turn taking because uh, this one um basically analyze on the language part yeah okay um what about the focus? Okay, uh, in terms of the language system, okay, uh, rules of form. Okay, I can I can specify more. I can add more to this part. Okay, for example, the language system. Uh, maybe on tenses. Okay, maybe on um on uh sentence structure. Okay, I can specify uh, on this one. Okay, is it there? Uh, in the in, in the task. Okay, what about the meaning? Is it being explained clearly? Okay, the system, the form relationship. Is it there? Okay, for the task. Okay, and then for the mental operation parts. Okay, uh, this one detail according to what is found in the materials. Okay, for example, uh, select information. Okay, is the formation being selected? Or uh, is it is everything there? And then teachers just select which one teacher want to focus on. Okay, and what about the apply general knowledge? Okay, so you learn specific knowledge uh, in the class. So what about uh, the other general knowledge? Uh, is it there a part of the task? Okay, so these would be some of the uh, 
tasks, uh, some of the criteria that I'm going to use to analyze tasks inside the textbook. Okay, um, uh, the second one on who is. Okay, okay. For example, you uh, you're gonna look. Uh, is the task should be done individually or should it be done in group or in pairs? Okay, is it learner to whole class? So if there's any other criteria, I can add more to this in this column. Yeah. Okay, and then about what? Okay, uh, you're talking about input to learners. Okay, in terms of the form, is it uh, learners supposed to produce written form or spoken form for the task? Okay, for the source, uh, so uh, the content part, is it uh, from the textbook that you are using or you need to find uh, knowledge or um, source from outside of the course? Lesson means that you have to Google, it's not being provided uh, in the textbook. And or, you, or do you need to find out uh, the, the knowledge or the information from other learners? Okay. And then the nature of the task, yeah, you're going to look whether is it fiction, non fiction, or is it song? Okay. I can actually, um, for the criteria part, I can actually um, change it a bit here and there uh, to suit what's inside the task. Okay, so that I can tick, tick, tick uh, on, 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 on the column, yeah? Okay, and then expected output from learners. Okay, what do you expect students be able to, to say, uh, to complete the task orally or in written form? Okay, what about the source uh, for the learners? Okay, the, the materials? Okay, uh, is the source uh, for the expected output from learner comes from the materials or from the other learners? Okay, uh, what about the nature of the task? Okay, uh, would it be fiction, non-fiction, or song. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, that is actually all for me uh, for my PhD, the PhD thesis that I'm currently doing right now. Okay. Uh, so I'm doing um, on textbook evaluation. I'm actually being more focused other than say materials evaluation. I'm more focused. I choose textbook because materials is very big words. Yeah. It can be uh, a CD ROM, a cassette, it can be an excerpt from newspaper. So I'm choosing material. Uh, I'm choosing textbook, sorry, or course book. You can call it course book or uh, textbook. I'm choosing textbook. And when it comes to ESP, which textbook? What textbook? Okay. I'm choosing EAW textbook, English for Academic Writing textbook. So I'm very, uh, I've narrowed down my thesis on what I want to do, okay, and how I'm going to go about it, which framework I'm going to uh, uh, adapt, okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's all for me today. Yeah, let's go back to Dr. Karel. All right, okay, thank you very much, Farah. Okay, uh, it's been uh, good, uh, it's been good sharing. Okay, we, we talk about uh, textbook evaluation, and you also, you also share about your, your PhD uh, study as well. And uh, I noticed Dr. Ramiza is here. Okay, hi, Dr. Ramiza, welcome. Uh, so, okay, uh, if you missed the, the first part uh, just now, uh, we actually uh, live stream in our KLM uh, YouTube, okay, uh, Kulia of Languages and Management, uh, our YouTube channel. So, uh, inshallah, you, you'll be able to actually uh, the, the recording will be there in our YouTube, and then uh, maybe we can further the discussion. But before we, before we end, of course, uh, it's open for Q and A. Should you have any question, uh, would you like to share anything, uh, regarding your own experience in you know in selecting and evaluating a uh, textbook for your courses, you know you are you're welcome to to share. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, Dr. Khairil. Yes, I am. Okay, uh, thank you. And thank you for having me in this uh, ESP because I am really into this, this ESP. And Alhamdulillah, my, my colleague there, Nur Zainia, shared the link. So that's why I am able to attend oh, this. Oh, I see. Okay, uh, so that's why I'm able to attend to this program. Okay, uh, yes, I missed the early part because according to know she had class at 10, so she forgot to share. I was waiting. <laughs> And, you know, before 10. Okay, so I miss uh, uh, whatever the presenter, Farah, is it? Uh, uh, yeah, start, Farah. Uh, Farah started off. But um, if um, you had mentioned it, Farah, do you mind repeating uh, what is actually the, the problem? The problem, um, uh, you know, the problem that leads you to do this uh, research on uh, W, on writing, AAW, right? You, you said? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. 
Okay, uh, in my research problems, I talk about uh, the student um, uh, the student problems when it comes to academic writing. You see, when they are in school, uh, the way they learn to write is different compared to when they are in the university. In, um, in school, they are writing essay, composition essay. Okay, in, in university, they are writing academic piece of paper. Uh, the way, you know, the lingo, the choice of word, the sentence structure is all a bit different. So, um, so, and also in school, focus would be more on the proficiency, okay? A teacher focus more on the, for example, the sentence structure, the, uh, uh, the, the, the tenses, okay? But in academic writing, we focus, uh, it's not focus, um, we try to um, teach students on the skills, for example, uh, research skills, okay? And then based on the research skills, how students gonna use it to write um, an academic piece of paper. So uh, you see students always, they, they got a bit of like shock when they, you know, from transition from school to university in terms of uh, academic writing, they got a bit shocked, okay? Because the way to write is different, okay? The way to express the idea is different, okay? So uh, that is um, the, the, the start of my interest uh, to, do, um, to do the research on this area, specifically uh, in academic writing. Because you see in school, I'm teaching English, uh, in terms of the writing um, is very uh, it's simpler compared to university style of writing. Writing. Okay, the genre in university uh, is a bit uh, complicated lah if you compare to the, the student one. Okay, and then um, also some of the student uh, and also the fact that you know being able to write a good piece of academic writing is actually leads to success in university. So there's another part that really interests me to do research on this one and and also why I select a uh, textbook uh, to, to do research on it because a uh, textbook has been used as uh, one of the main materials uh, in the classroom okay for for the teachers and also for the course instructors to look at to refer to when they are teaching in the class so they have a guideline normally they have a they have a they have a course book or a textbook okay so but some teachers they prefer to use other than course book or textbook so i'm being specific on textbook because compared to for example like cd rom or cassette textbook will be uh, the one that uh, normally teachers or the course uh, esp course instructor would choose to use uh, okay so that would be um some of my uh, some of my the reasons why i want to do research on this part yeah Okay, Farah, uh, thank you so much. Very interesting. Uh, may I lead to my second question? Uh, okay. Uh, I, I, so I, very I, nervous. I, uh, don't, do not, don't, don't have to be nervous because your study is very interesting. Okay. okay. Um, you, you may have mentioned it, but and then as I said, I joined later. Okay. Mm. Uh, so uh, how many textbooks are you analyzing? Is it only one? Okay. Um, before this, I had a discussion with Dr. Karil. We want to, we want to analyze uh, the textbook published by the Malaysian author yeah, in Malaysia for academic writing textbook. So we have uh, we have selected, uh, I think that would be like around six textbook code, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. But then again, during our defense, I think uh, we might need to reduce it to maybe one or two textbook and focus on that textbook. Uh, more and with the with the, a bunch of students that might uh, or currently using the textbook. Okay, okay. So that means the textbook is what the students are using, right? Uh, yeah. Ideally, should be that. Yeah. Yeah. Ideally, should be that. Okay. All right. Uh, very interesting. And uh, best of luck, Farah, to completion of the of your study. Thank you very much. I really need it. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dr. Hairil. Those all are my questions. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Ramiza. Uh, any question from uh, Rauda or Kairil? Uh, before that, Farah, could you please uh, click exit on your on your screen? Because on YouTube, it's a blank now. Uh, it's a black, sp uh, uh, black, you know, black space on, in the YouTube now. This Yeah, so you have oh. to end your end your slideshow or end your sharing. Then I. I think yeah, maybe soon. Okay, because it's I already so ended. Uh, uh, okay. okay, all right. Okay, any question from Rauda or Kairil? 
Okay, all right. So yes, uh, as a part of the assignment for uh for this course as well, you know, they have to, um, they have to come out with a uh, you know textbook evaluation as well, material evaluation. Okay, but looking at the the nature of evaluations as well as the you know the nature of the materials that we use in our ESP classroom, sometimes you know we can't really say that uh we use uh you know textbook in fact. Uh, one of my introduction for my lecture last week was that, you know, it's impossible for us to find a textbook that match all of our needs, our student needs. Therefore, a lot of teachers, a lot of lecturers, we choose to mix and match uh, our, you know, our, <clears throat> our materials that we use in the classrooms so that it, uh, you know, it address the, the learning outcomes that we want to address uh, the, the syllabus, so to say. All right. Okay, I think um I think that is uh for today. Inshallah, uh, I will be sharing uh the link. Uh, sorry, the link is actually uh the recording is actually this is live stream in our YouTube. Okay, uh, if you would like to to go back to the recording from the beginning, uh, you may go to our YouTube channels. Uh, it is Kulia of Languages and Management. Um, you know, over there you can get the link uh to this uh to this session today. And inshallah, um, you know, Dr. Ramiza, if you would like to have the, uh, you know, further discussion on this, you know, like you're more than welcome. We are happy to have you, uh, you know, sharing, um, you know, I'm sure, you know, we can share a lot of things, uh, you know, in, a, in, you know, like related to ESP and because this semester we are, we are doing on the textbook, uh, the materials uh, development. So maybe we can also uh, share a lot of things about, about that as well. Okay, and uh, I hope that this session, uh, yes? Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah, okay. And I hope that this session uh, being, uh, you know, very beneficial for everyone. And again, thank you very much, Farah. <clears throat> you have been, uh, you know, thank you for spending your Sunday with us. Okay, uh, and I hope, you know, uh, all the best and good luck for your, for your uh, study, for your PhD. And of course, we need to have more, uh, meetings uh, before we, we can actually resubmit uh, your proposal. Okay, with that, I think uh, we can end here. All right, so thank you very much, everyone. Let's finish with Tazbih Kifaran Surah Wal As. Okay, all right, thank you very much, everyone. Have a good day ahead. All right, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, Dr. Hayri. Thank you, Farah. Okay. Yeah, I love you.